This Saturday marks the 34th observance of NoHo Pride Day, highlighting the presence and contributions of the lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender communities locally. NoHo Pride Director Bear White and spokesperson J.M. Sorrell joined us recently to talk about what's planned and what the event has come to mean for participants. It really does start very early with everyone getting lined up and, and the excitement starts about 10.30 in the morning when everyone gets lined up for the parade and the, all the vendors come into the, um, the fairgrounds to set up. And from noon until 5.30, it is nonstop and people are happy and having fun all day long. It's a great, great day. And talk a little bit about I mean, this, we're here in the final days and weeks before. The planning really, I think, starts probably about 6 o'clock on the night that the, the previous year's events, and it, it never ends. It's a lot of work, tremendous amount of planning and logistics. It is. It gets easier year after year. Um, but, but I think that every year more is added. Um, every year it costs more. Every year new things happen. Um, we buy new equipment. We try to make it safer and kinder for everyone to come. Um, but it, it's, it's certainly a labor of love for the people who do it. J.M., let me talk about this event kind of in the macro because it is a regional event really, and more than that, because people come from all over the country, and I think you have some international visitors usually as well, but I know the number that usually I see cited is 20,000 visitors or so to Northampton and vicinity for the day. That's a big impact. That, that's a lot of hotel rooms booked. That's a lot of restaurant meals purchased. This is, aside from anything else, this is a big event bringing people to our area. Absolutely. I have a friend who's a, a heterosexual ally who calls it our Fourth of July parade um, because everybody comes out. Um, and as you said, Jim, people come from, um, they come from upstate New York, people come from the central and eastern part of the state, from the northern New England states, even New York, and yes, perhaps some international visitors as well. Um, it, it doesn't hurt the economy of Northampton for the day or for the weekend or even the week. Um, and it's a wonderful coming together of so many um, really different, diverse groups. You just feel the energy that on that day, we're all in it together. I know this year's theme, and I want to ask you to expound on that, both of you, feel free. We continue to fight for all of our rights. Yes. I mean, as you know, Jim, we live in a fairly privileged area in terms of progressive politics, um, feminist politics, certainly LGBT rights. Uh, Bear and I are both extremely appreciative. We were talking about that before we came to this segment. And um, we don't um, take it for granted in the least. There are still things happening around the country that are disturbing. Fifteen states have filed a um, friend of the court brief that um, if the Supreme Court on April 28th um, says that we should have marriage equality as a federal right, it will bring incalculable damage to civic life. So we're still described in that way. Eighty countries still have it. It's still illegal to even be gay. Um, and you can be imprisoned and in some places even executed um, for either being gay or lesbian or being perceived to be that way. We still have 28 states in this country where um, you're not protected job or housing-wise based on sexual orientation in 38 states based on gender identity. So Bear and I and a lot of others feel that it's really important that we support the people who are still struggling, that we are in it together. And we certainly celebrate that day. There's no question about it. We have a lot to celebrate, a lot to be grateful for, but we still have a ways to go. And Bear, let, let me ask you to comment on that as well, because as... As J.M. says, it is a day for celebration and fun, but nobody ever forgets all of the difficulties that remain, all of the barriers that remain. I mean, that, that is always part of what's going on amidst the fun and the celebration. Right. Well, for 34 years, it always hasn't been a celebration. Um, we started with bags over their heads when they first marched um, to having it a very mil uh, militant type um, uh, parade and rally um, 
and now it's more like our area is accepting and we celebrate, but we also know that we're special in this area. <laughs> we, have, we have something that a lot of places don't. So we do try to in, enjoy it as well as keep it in our minds and our hearts that we have to try it for other places. After the parade through the heart of Northampton, Northampton Center, downtown, everybody goes to the three county fairgrounds. Right. There are performances, uh, speeches, events. So you, you got some great groups of, of, of nationally known folk rock artists from New Jersey, uh, whose name is, uh, let's, I've got it right here, Christine Martucci. You've got Pioneer Valley Gay Men's Chorus. Yeah. They're so good. The, the Raging Grannies. I, I think a lot of people are going to come just to see the Raging Grannies. I mean, you've you got a quite a day planned. Yeah, the Raging Grannies are, are great. Um, they're older women in our community who... Um, sing songs about justice and protest, and uh, they're great. We have them about every other year come because they're lovely to have. We have um, a great pianist, Edison Arthur, that's going to be there, as well as a rock band called Girls on Girls, which I'm looking forward to having. So it's going to be a great day, I think. What does it mean to both of you to see how this has grown and the times have changed, and maybe the people along the street watching the parade have changed yeah. as well. It, it's, it's been quite a transition in three and a half decades. Right? Let me jump in first, Bear, sure. and then you, you. When we used to march from the Bridge Street Cemetery to Pulaski Park along Main Street, there were a couple hundred people, maybe a thousand um, in the early days. You would not see people lined up along the streets at all. We had very few allies. We had a couple of PFLAG founders that we all sort of treated as our parents because we were so grateful they were there. And I remember Z's restaurant at the time, they would, their wait staff would come out and clap for us and we would be in tears because they were the only business doing that at the time in the early 1980s, mid 1980s. We also looked out for, in front of City Hall, um, there were some more fundamentalist factions and churches with some signs that were frankly ugly um, and um, hateful directed at us. Uh, we had peacekeepers um, to make sure that we you know, kept the distance between the protesters and the marchers. So it was a completely different day than it is now. And I don't know what you'd like to say, Bear. Well, I think that um, from even the time that I started, with pride, um, it was a few hundred on Main Street to now thousands lining from the beginning of Main Street all the way down to the fairgrounds, all along the sides of the road. It, to look down from the fairgrounds back towards uh, the city center is amazing. And not just for the parade, but for everyone on the sides. It's astounding, the amount of people. And the allies, I think, almost match the LGBT community. Mm -hmm. That used to be the anomaly. And I, um, I'm, I've been doing this for a very long time, Jim, and I'm still very choked up when I see how many additional allies are coming, church groups, spiritual communities, high school groups, et cetera, year after year after year. I think people like to watch it so they're along the sidelines on Main Street, but then they join in the end. They want to see the beginning part of it. It's hard to know if there are more people, I think, along the sides than there are marchings. I mean, there's so right, It's just jam-packed. It's it great. Is. Well, unfortunately, we're out of time, but uh, the big day is coming up, May 2nd. Right. Let's all, uh, fingers crossed, for great weather. And we thank you both for coming in and telling us uh, what to wait for on May 2nd. Thank, thank you. you.